Hi everyone. In this lesson we're going to talk more about algorithms and how we can learn more about how to use them and how to create them. An algorithm is simply a step-by-step -step description of how to do something, which typically also identifies what information is needed and how that information will be used. In computer science as well as mathematics, algorithms are often written abstractly, utilising variables in place of specific numbers. Computer programs are built to solve a specific problem or meet a specific need. So designing an algorithm usually starts with a problem that needs to be solved. When thinking about a computer program, it is often a problem that needs to be solved in an automated or partially automated way, usually due to the need to solve a problem that would be either too large or just too complicated to sensibly solve by hand. Once you have identified your problem, the process of algorithm design then involves identifying what information is needed to solve the problem and then also filtering out any unnecessary information that might also be present, but that is not needed. Then ne the next stage is breaking down the solution or decomposing the solution into smaller, more manageable steps. One of the interesting aspects of a software designer's job is that they want to be able to reuse algorithms that they create. They don't want to have to start each new software design problem from scratch. So algorithm design often involves looking for parts of the solution that can be generalised and then used again in other problems. We will come back to these concepts later, but in the rest of this lesson, we will focus on examples of algorithms and example activities that could be used to teach algorithm and algorithm design in the classroom. You can think of an algorithm as being very similar to a recipe. A recipe involves a list of ingredients and then the method or steps that you need to undertake to prepare and cook your food. This is similar to the data that is needed and the algorithm that is used in computational thinking. When you decide you want to make a particular recipe for dinner, you first start by looking up in a cookbook or thinking about what ingredients you need, identifying what you already have and what you need to buy, and then working out what shops you need to go to in order to buy those extra ingredients. Once you have all of your ingredients, then you then start your recipe or your algorithm following the steps of the recipe one by one and using your ingredients as they are needed in order to produce your final food or the outcome of your algorithm. For younger students, developing the skills for computational thinking and algorithm development requires familiarisation with the language and concepts associated with instructions, for example, movement, sequence, place and spatial awareness. Activities to promote this can be built out of other common activities that they complete in the day in the classroom or in their life outside of their classroom. Initially, in the digital technologies curriculum, our focus is on following, describing and representing sequences of instructions and decisions needed to solve simple problems. To start exploring instructions, students could be asked to explore games such as Simon Says or instruction games such as this one where a set of paddle pop sticks are labelled with different kinds of instructions and then kept in a box or a jar. Students then pull out a stick and have to enact the instruction. A nice variation on this that we have found is the zap game, where students keep pulling out sticks and acting out the instructions until they pull one out of a specific colour or with zap written on it. There are many variations on this game which can also be extended to sequences of instructions. When exploring sequences, students could also be asked to work on sequence charts, exploring key events from storybooks and recording them in the correct order in the chart. Decisions are a fundamental concept in computational thinking, as they allow us to change our actions based upon the value of data. For example, if it is raining, then before we go outside, we might need to put on boots and a raincoat. You would be able to see examples of technology and decisions all around you. For example, a lift will only stop at a floor of a building if the button for that floor has been pressed. At an ATM, the cash you have requested will only be dispensed if you have enough funds in your account. Decisions can also be explored using play. For example, students could be asked to explore the individual steps in games that they play, such as hopscotch, and asked to create a sequence of instructions that describe the games that they play including those instructions that ask them to make a choice in action. For older students, our learning objectives will move on to their development of their own algorithms for a given problem. For example, students could be asked to construct a maze or an obstacle course and then navigate a blindfolded friend through the maze using only verbal instructions. 
One interesting aspect of these activities is asking students to think about what kinds of information they needed to give and what information was provided that was not useful. Did they always have enough information to guide their decisions and their movement? Did they know which direction to turn? Was it confusing at any point? This helps turn the discussion towards data and both what data was needed to solve the problem, i.e. Like directions to move or directions to turn, and how that data was provided, as well as considering data that was not useful. A similar game for younger children might involve students working in pairs to recreate a design or a pattern. One player can arrange his or her blocks in a specific design or pattern, and then the other player has to form their blocks into the same pattern. The catch here, though, is that the students cannot see each other's blocks, but must rely only on verbal instructions. This is a great activity for exploring instructions and sequences, as well as building both spoken language and vocabulary, as well as listening skills. A nice extension of this activity is to form a pattern or a design with blocks, and then swap with another student and ask them to write down instructions for recreating the pattern. There are often multiple ways to achieve the same goal, multiple algorithms for the one problem, and it can be useful for students to explore different pathways to the same endpoint. Repetition is also an important concept in computational thinking and is commonly used in algorithms. We can recognise this in the behaviour of software systems around us. For example, to go back to the example of the lift, an algorithm that controls the behaviour of the lift might look something like this. Go to the next floor. If the button for that floor has been pressed, stop and open the doors. Otherwise, continue moving to the next floor. Repeat this until we have reached the top or perhaps the bottom of the building. Repetition allows us to repeat a common task many times, perhaps with slightly different information or context, such as in the example above, where we are considering a different floor at every time. One common aspect of repetition is the inclusion of a condition that tells you or the computer how many times to repeat a sequence of instructions. We will explore this further in our examples. In younger years, repetition can be explored by identifying storybooks or nursery rhymes that involve repetition and having students sing or create their own simple poems or songs with repetition. Dance and music can also be a useful avenue here through teaching students simple musical patterns that they can represent by singing, using musical patterns in a musical instrument or dance or movement, which they can then combine through repetition into a single performance. A more advanced setting might involve exploring repetition in the development of a game. For example, students could explore repetition in games with the intention to create one at the end of the unit. The teacher could introduce repetition by having students play a game such as basketball. At the end of the lesson, ask students questions like, how did you know when to start in the centre again? How did you know when to switch from offence to defence? Students could write out these rules as an algorithm and then come up with their own sport games with their own algorithm involving both repetition and decision making. At the more advanced year levels, we will explore problems where students will need to identify how to solve a problem in terms of exploring both the data needed as well as the functional requirements of a solution. An example activity that would help explore this capability would involve building a model of a house. What information is needed? How many windows does the house have? How many doors? How would you build a door into your model? Does it need stairs? We will come back to this objective when we talk more about programming and decomposition. We will end this lesson by exploring some possible activities with strong connections with other knowledge areas. In mathematics, one example could be to explore pathways and simple graphs by working out the shortest way to get from one point to another. This could be done as an activity by constructing a town with roads and then working out how to manoeuvre their toy cars through the roads from one point to another. Algorithms could be explored here through either the construction of the town, how do you build a road, how, do the roads, how are the roads connected, or in the directions that the car has to take through the town. This could also be extended to include discussions about GPS technology and online maps. In a theme of food or nutrition, students could be asked to explore recipes perhaps cutting out the individual steps in paper form and then working out the right order. Or considering what would happen if the steps were done in the wrong order. Imagine breaking the egg after you've tried to mix it into the flour. Or to create a new recipe of their own for their favourite food. 
In science, students could explore a dressing game associated with science by choosing a character's outfit to fit the weather to demonstrate decisions. This could be done in many ways, for example, by dressing up in the right clothes, putting the right clothes on a paper doll, or even through the development of an online game using computer programming. This is one example we will demonstrate further in a worked example when we consider the next unit as we explore visual programming. Repetition could also be demonstrated through a physical education class. The teacher could describe what a loop is to the class as explained by Drex in a story from the Computational Fairy Tales collection. A loop is defined by two things, something to do and a way to know when to stop doing it. You keep going that doing that one thing over and over until you stop. The teacher could have instructions such as keep skipping until the whistle blows or keep shooting at the hoop until the ball goes in or keep passing the ball to your partner until you have passed it 10 times. The students could help the teacher think of sentences that are loops or involve repetition.